it has been approximately three score and seven years since the bell was rung from this schoolhouse. Three score and seven years since the rudiments of reading, writing, and arithmetic were taught by teachers who were faced with a constant shortage of supplies, but were blessed with an abundance of ingenuity, creativity, and mother wit. And it would be three score and seven years before we would come back to this location, to these hallowed grounds, and pause to rededicate this small yet significant landmark. God, we thank you, thank you. that you're bringing recognition mm -hmm. to this history yes. that is all of our history. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, we thank you that you are providing for the renovation and the refurbishment of this establishment. God, we thank you for all of those that came through Cherry Grove School. We thank you for all of those that are a product of this work, even right now in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you use this occasion, this event, this school to spark other great rededications other great renovations in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you right now. God, we just so happy, hallelujah. We just so happy about this Cherry Grove School. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise for it. We know that you're gonna do great things for us through this. Hallelujah, it has brought us together. We thank you. Thank you. We thank you for every soul that's here today, yes, God. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Forgive us for our sins. Oh, yes. Cleanse us from yes, unrighteousness. Yes, yes, Create in us a clean heart. Yes, hey, yes, and yes. renew a right spirit yes, within Lord. us in the yes, name Lord. of Jesus. Name oh, God, bring us together yes. the way you intend it in the name of Jesus. Name Everybody say amen. 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 And amen. 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 I am so pleased to welcome you mm. to the rededication program on this fourth day of June in the year 2022. Amen. It was 1910. Mm. It was 1910. That's over 100 years has brought us to this point. We are so delighted that you have taken your time to come here today because we wouldn't be here doing this if it wasn't for each of you and all the other ones that would want to be here but are not able to for one reason or the other. We know they're here in spirit and we thank them, we thank you. Well, we're here to celebrate. Yes. Amen. We're here to celebrate the American dream. Yes. This is an American dream that's been realized one time, but now a second time. Now, a lot of us have dreams, and they're good. I mean, y'all remember Jacob and the angels and the ladder? And we also remember Dr. King and his dream, and it was for all America. But dreams do not just happen. They are achieved by sharing a common goal and working together to share that objective. Now, in the first decade of the 1900s, some rural African-American tenant farmers, members here of Cherry Grove School, or church, excuse me, the Cohen Town and the Sandtown communities had a dream. Many of these people had little or no formal education. At this time, there were few public schools in Wilkes County, and even fewer for black children. But these parents, this community had a dream and their dream was that their children would have the opportunity for an education. For this dream of education for their children to become a reality, these church members, the natives, neighbors, the friends, all had to do it themselves without funding from the county. The Cherry Grove Baptist Church provided this site. 
most of the necessary building materials had been assembled in the area. We're talking about abandoned houses, abandoned barns, abandoned sheds. That's where the windows and the siding and some of those 12 by 12 inch beams and 6 by 6 inch beams came from. Donations of both time and materials from the community made this dream come alive and be achieved. For more than 40 years, primary to seventh grade students were taught not only the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, but they learned life lessons too, a sense of belonging to a caring community, a thirst for learning. They learned respect, sharing, care and concern for others as well as their church and their community. Consolidation of rural schools in Georgia changed the use of Cherry Grove Schoolhouse from schooling children to becoming additional space for Cherry Grove Baptist Church. Former students continued to finish high school. Many of them went on to finish business school, trade schools, college, and joined the military. Others found jobs off the farm, went into business for themselves, or joined the Northern Migration for better jobs. But these former students did more. They honored Cherry Grove School with their memories and their stories, which they shared with family and friends. It was from these precious memories that a new dream was born, <clears throat> the dream of saving Cherry Grove School. A core group came together and put forth a plan, their dream, to rehabilitate Cherry Grove School. They worked. They re did researching, they interviewed former students, family, friends, all to gather facts and material. Their action was the starting point which enabled Cherry Grove Schoolhouse to be nominated and placed on both the state of Georgia Historic Res Registry and the National Register of Historic Places. The building you see is the second dream for Cherry Grove Schoolhouse. It was realized through the efforts of the community, black and white, working together to achieve a common goal. This present dream is dedicated to celebrating the individuals who had the first dream for their children. Today's dream is to continue sharing that example of determination and hard work that show that you can achieve a goal when you work hard for it. An English writer named John Haywood said in 1538 that Rome was not built in a day. It is, a, it is certainly true that the renovation and restoration of Cherry Grove Schoolhouse did not occur in a single day, week, month, or year. In fact, for the last several years, Pastor Butler and her staff and many others have been working to ensure that our beloved schoolhouse was not torn down and would await God's time to assemble the right team of people to, con to conduct the restoration and renovation to bring the schoolhouse to where it is today so that it reflects the struggle, resistance, resilience, fortitude, and the desire for self-determination of an oppressed people made in the image of God in the Imago day. No, Rome was not built in a single day. As it has been said about seven years ago, the current process began to be began in earnest with our brother in Christ, Brother Barrett Hansen, when he contacted those of us who went on to make up the Friends of Cherry Grove Incorporated. With my maternal grandmother, Sister Ethel Willis Anderson, having been born in 1900, and attending Cherry Grove School at its very beginning in 1910, my great-grandparents, Tig and Lucy Cohen Willis, are buried in these hollowed grounds, on these hollowed grounds. During this seven-year period, Barrett Hansen coordinated with the University of Georgia to produce a professional historic structure report for our schoolhouse. And this has been the blueprint that has guided our renovation and restoration. He did this in day one of this project, or correction, in year one of the project. 
Additionally, as has been said, our uh, application for 501c3 status has been successfully processed. Moreover, we have applied for and have successfully gained placement on the Georgia uh, and National Registry of Historic Places. Lastly, in 2021, our schoolhouse was selected for placement on the list of places in peril in Georgia. And then, and then, and then came the nearly two-year-long fundraising process of which each of you were a significant part. And we truly thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all your gifts and all your contributions and all your love during this period, even up to now and beyond. Then the actual renovation and restoration began. We are not completely done yet, but the tradition of our community what he has given to us. That's why we're here today. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayers and allowing the restoration and renovation of Cherry Grove Schoolhouse. Rome was not built in a day, but the builders laid bricks every day. God enabled us to persevere week in and week out, month in and month out, restoring and renovating our little schoolhouse. The last seven years of hard work, headaches, heartaches, successes, and shortcomings are nothing when we look at the many de de decades the original sharecropper students and parents and grandparents endured while toiling and weeping and mourning and praying and suffering, trying to become educated at, at the same time, gathering the wood, the nails, the windows, the blackboards, the roofing, and all that was needed from a lot of different places to build this structure in 1910. When this one room, one teacher, rural schoolhouse for the children of sharecroppers was constructed in 1910, members of this community knew or could have known that the first person to die in the Boston Massacre in 1770, which helped fuel the outrage against British, the British and spurred the American Revolution was Christmas Attucks, a black man. They knew about the Battle of Kettle Creek Indeed, they did, Brother Chestnut, and they knew that they had ancestors who had served in the Revolutionary War. They knew that they had served in an unforgiving system of chattel slavery in this country for 244 years prior to the Emancipation Proclamation. They knew that Georgia law forbade them from learning to read or write from 1829 until the end of the Civil War. The citizens of this community and the Cointown community was aware of the existence of many schools and colleges around Georgia and the nation, even the University of Georgia in 1875. They knew that, the Civil, that when the Civil War ended, they were free to learn, to read, to study, and grow. But there were few state-sponsored schools at any level for them to attend. They knew that Reconstruction, although short, had opened up new vistas of learning and work to them, but they had no education or meaningful jobs to generate income. This community knew or could have known that from 1832 until the end of the Civil War, its citizens had been obliged to be members of First Baptist Church in Washington, Georgia, where they were exposed to education on many levels. This community knew that when the majority of the black population withdrew from First Baptist Church and formed Springfield Baptist Church in 1868, there existed a small, apparently one-room schoolhouse beginning in 1871 on the Springfield Church property for those black students who could make their way to its location. This community knew that they wanted their children and themselves to have access to all the education they could get as fast as they could get it. For indeed, they believe that salvation and academic education, salvation and academic education were the key to a better life for all. In the mid-1970s, seven daughter churches sprung from Springfield Baptist Church, Cherry Grove being one of them. Members of Cherry Grove and the Cointown community continued its quest for education in private homes with tutors in Sunday school, in Bible study, in church, and elsewhere. In 1881, 
Reverend Calvin Lockhart became pastor of Cherry Grove Baptist Church. He, along with Reverend Lewis Williams, pastor of Springfield Baptist Church, formed a coalition of black ministers who fought diligently for more education for the black young people of our county. Reverend Lockhart pastored Cherry Grove until 1940, correction, 1925. He pastored New Ford from 1880 until 1925. He pastored Gibson Grove and other churches for a number of years. He focused on education for young people, and he made a difference in ensuring the erection of, of, of schools like this throughout the county uh, for, for young black people, young black Americans. Then in 1889, and I see Sister Booker sitting with us in the back, and I hear her read this history every year. In 1889, Cherry Grove Sunday School, along with Sunday schools for, of more than 20 black churches in the Wilkes County uh, Sunday School Union, correction, 20 or more school, black churches formed the Wilkes County Sunday, Lincoln Wilkes County Sunday School Union, and that organization still exists today. It is the educational component for all of the churches in our Sunday School Union. And, and so education was being delivered in a, a large manner by the churches, by the Sunday School Unions, and, and by so many entities of the church. Education was always uh, a high priority for the early members of Cherry Grove Baptist Church and for newly freed people everywhere. And yet this community in 1910 was just getting its first one room, one, te one teacher rural school. Why is this? Uh, this is uh, perhaps uh, a matter worthy of a PhD level re research. For indeed the thirst for education was so strong among our young people. This 1910 one room, one teacher rural schoolhouse is significant because it was the community's response, the community's response without the assistance of government to the unquenchable thirst of young black people for education. It continued to be the response for many years to come. Eternal God, we come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you for another day's journey. Thank you for all who have gathered together. Some have come near and some have come far. Thank you for the friends of Cherry Grove and others who have worked so faithful to accomplish this mission. As we rededicate Cherry Grove Schoolhouse back to you. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. For the living memories of all who have gone before us, and with deep gratitude to those in the past who have made this adventure of the spirit possible for us, and with high hopes for those who will walk in our spirit in the years that lie ahead. We dedicate this schoolhouse. In the expectation of unknown days ahead, conceived by us in dreams and visions for our children and our children's children, we rededicate this schoolhouse. As a heritage from the dead unto the living, as a gift from the living to those who shall follow us, and as a pledge of service, a sign of faith. We rededicate this schoolhouse. Um, F&M Bank is proud to be a part of the, the process. We're proud to be affiliated. It's so good to see all of you here um, can't tell you how much, how, how humbled I am again. If y'all have seen that, um, that the list of people that have donated to this is just a, you know, remarkable how our community has come together to support this. And, um, and we're really proud that, that, uh, that it was taken on. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm glad that it, they came to us and, uh, and, uh, and we could find a way way to make all of this happen. So, so it's just a 
it's just really pleasing to see it all come together and um and we want to thank all y'all it's been a lot of work and i know y'all done a lot of time but we're just glad to see it completed and we want to thank everybody for everything they've done there's so much history out in wilkes county and and the fact that this this historic school building has now been saved by your efforts uh and, and and donations from elsewhere to help pull this together is just remarkable and i think it's going to be a great draw to to wilkes county to washington um, for for so many people to come out here and appreciate the rich history we have out here now in 2021 <clears throat> the trust placed this site on our places in peril list and since then through the hard work and dedication of many of you gathered here today this remarkable property has been brought back from the brink of being lost, perhaps forever. What I noticed when I was here in February, the building sits on foundation piers made of stacked local field stone. The fact that most of these stones have lasted well over 100 years is phenomenal. A testament, if you will, to the physical and strong spiritual strength that seems to flow throughout that building. While the structure is small, the dreams and achievements of the children who attended classes and school could not be contained within the walls of the schoolhouse. Historic preservation is the key to not only understanding our history and where we came from, but it also builds bridges to the present and the future. There's a great quote from the National Trust of Historic Preservation I'd like to share with all of you. And it goes, we do not honor the historic buildings in our midst, nor those who once inhabited them by trapping these structures in amber or sequestering them, sequestering them away behind velvet ropes. We do it by working to see that they continue to play a vibrant role at the heart of the community. This is what Cherry Grove Schoolhouse embodies, and the trust is looking forward to seeing how the schoolhouse will not only serve the residents of Washington Wilkes, but all the visitors who will come and visit this remarkable structure. And while the original builders of Cherry Grove Schoolhouse shaped the building physically, thereafter, the building then shaped the community and many of you all. To the friends of the Cherry Grove Schoolhouse who worked tirelessly from attending all those Zoom meetings to corresponding emails back and forth from our organization and taking my phone calls and our phone calls, thank you. To the volunteers, thank you for your dedication and the time that you shared so generously to help make this day possible. And finally, to all the donors whose financial support helped make Cherry Grove Schoolhouse a beacon of preservation success. Be proud. Celebrate this milestone. Congratulations. Preserve on, y'all, and thank you. But there's two things that I really want you to take away from this event today. Number one, this building was constructed by African American community leaders who had little or no formal education, largely due to the fact that they were the children of persons who had been enslaved and for whom education was denied. They wanted their children to have the opportunity that only education brings. So without crying out and asking for help, they went about collecting all of the supplies and materials they could from wherever they could, and they acted. They built a schoolhouse, and from that schoolhouse, uh, a lot of our African-American friends have matriculated uh, and have shown the faith that those people placed in the education. And this is the important historical concept. The other thing is that through the leadership of Mr. Barrett Hansen and members of the Cherry Grove Friends of the Friends of Cherry Grove Schoolhouse, uh, a biracial committee has worked tirelessly to bring this about. Uh, this is an example of how we can set aside racism in order to accomplish goals. Amen. 
It is the one thing, the example that if other people will follow, we will have less racism and less racial problems in our community. And I think that is equally as important as the fact that it was built. So uh, just keep that in mind as you leave. And please remember two things. It was built by people who didn't have an education that wanted one. And it was rehabbed by people of the community, both black and white, who felt like that it was a historic monument and should be preserved. And with that, I thank you for your participation and your help in, and assistance in that effort. Friends and supporters, we, the Friends of Cherry Grove Schoolhouse, would like to remind you that the game is not over. We have got one more move, one more move, which would allow us to tell the story of how this school building is an important and vital link in the evolution of African-American education and its importance not only for Wilkes County, but by extension, the Georgia as well as the South. We've got one more move to show how the rehabilitation of this came about and how we were able to transform the picture that's on the back of your program to the picture that's on the front. Now, in order to do this, in order to take this one more move, we are going to need your help and your support. Now, we have intentionally left out the furnishings from the schoolhouse. You will see that when you go in there. Now, why did we do that, pray tell? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> we did that in order to entice you, in order to encourage you, in order to conjole you to come back in October when we have our grand opening. It is our hope, it is our prayer that by that time we would have, how you doing Miss Jess? We would have received our wish list in full. Are we together? Okay, now I would be remiss, I would be remiss if I did not recognize some people. This may have been, well let me put it this way. Will the Andersons please stand? And the Tuckers please stand. And the chestnuts, please stand. David, you can just wave your hand. And Mr. James Simpson, please stand. And Lorraine Hansen, please stand. The people that you see standing here and there are the ones who did the work. It may have been my vision, but without their work, without their labor, without their hard work, without their determination, none of this, my vision would have been a dream deferred. And you know what Langston Hughes said about a dream deferred. Oh, yeah. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it draw up like a raisin in the sun or does it fester like a sowing run? Oh. Well, my dream did not fester because of you. Because of you, each one of you made her possible. Thank you. On this journey of seven years, we lost two warriors. One was Nancy Cohen Gumby, and the other Miss Kay Fennell. And if you don't recognize those names, obviously you're not from Washington Wilkes County. Cousin Nancy Cohen Gumby was our family historian. She was the one, Brother Willingham, that bootleg historians such as myself would run to and sit at her feet like an empty pitcher before a full fountain, mm -hmm. hoping that some of her wisdom, some of her knowledge from the days gone by would drip down to us. And she never disappointed in the days of old, Melissa, she would have been one of the African griots who the village would go to to keep the knowledge of the village and would recite them over and over and over again from memory. That was Cousin Nancy. And then there was Miss Kate Fennell. Without her book about the education of Wilkes County, we would have had insufficient information, Amen. Dennis, to present in order to get on the Georgia and the National Register. Then there's a third person. She was not a member of the board, but she was a cheerleader. She was an encourager. Oh, yes. 
and we all periodically need encouragement. And had she been here today, she would have been somewhere down front, bearing witness to every morsel of truth that she heard. I refer to Cousin Ruby Fanning. She recently made her transgression. She recently made her transition. She also is resting with the ancestors. Yes. And finally, at the end of the day, once the history is written, once the ink is dried, once the books are closed, for those who are interested in that restoration, it will be known, it will be known that this was done under the leadership of Reverend Kathy Butler. Amen. Praise the Lord. None of us could have done any of this unless the Cherry Grove Baptist Church had first given us stewardship over this project. Amen. It was our project, but it's their property. And property trumps project. <laughs> right? So it's one thing to remember. Also, the Chira Grove Schoolhouse is the first, and as of this day, as of this day, the only African American institution on the National Register of Historic Places in Wilkes County. Right. The only. The now, <laughs> we hope and pray that it doesn't continue to be the only. Mm -hmm. But history says you will always be the first. 